enough of these shenanigans. Let us commence battle. Uh, it's a bit extreme. It's not really battle. It's a review. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today we will be doing a revisit to the Creality High. We did a first unboxing video about four weeks ago now. Since then, we have put the machine through its paces and a number of multicolour prints, along with a whole pleasure of other prints. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Creality High specs, I shall go over those for you right now. The build volume for this machine is 260 millimeters by 260 millimeters by 300 millimeters. We have a typical print speed of 300 millimeters a second. However, the machine will max at 500 millimeters per second. We don't recommend that for quality purposes, but that is the maximum speed the machine is capable of. We have a 3.2 inch touchscreen display, nice swivelly rotatory display that folds away. Very nice to use, very responsive to the touch, very crisp graphics. We have a maximum nozzle temperature for this machine of 300 degrees C and the build plate will reach a maximum of 100 degrees C. Design and quality of this machine overall, when we first unboxed the machine, we were quite impressed at the quality of the machine, how it was constructed, how it looked, the components that were used in it. We still stand by it. It's a step up for Creality, in our opinion. You've got a cast metal base. You've got cast aluminium metal sidebars. It runs on linear rail bearings. They've just seriously changed the overall aesthetics of the machine, made it look more polished and refined, but not really sacrificed in any way in terms of quality so that's a plus the machine is constructed with numerous materials the top part here is a very very rigid plastic box section that spans between the two side gantries to stop any flex these are aluminium the base is aluminium the build plate is quite chunky and again it runs on two smooth rails with linear bearings backwards and forwards we've got dual lead screws hidden inside the extrusion and the x-axis is belt driven win the extruder also boasts all metal gearing and an all metal hot end for those of you who aren't aware of what an all metal hot end is basically from the nozzle through the actual heat block heater cartridge or to the point where your extruder meets the actual hot end there is a metal tube that connects the two so you do not have any of this ptfe tubing in between the extruder and the hot end it's all metal right the way through double-sided epoxy build plate which is how i would describe as a semi-smooth or satin finish it's not going to give you a heavy texture on your prints but it's absolutely perfect for printing with PLA, PETG. If you have the machine set in an enclosure, print ABS or ASA on it as well, along with TPU. The machine also comes fitted with a very, very handy, handy, handy dandy camera. Just here, we have this little plastic box with a little picture of a camera on. And at the side, you have a little camera. There is a little lens cover that you can flip round so you can close it and open it. This actually... Gives you remote access to one of your prints and i'm pretty certain it will also record time lapse if you want it to hi sorry to interrupt the camera does do time lapse but it only exports the video footage in 720p back to steve next up we have the run out sensor for the filament depending on which combination you use this configuration in if you didn't use it with a cfs user unit and you used it with a spool holder the extruder has a built-in filament detection sensor if you run out of filament or the filament jams, the machine will tell you you've run out of filament or you have a jam and pause the print until you remedy the, the problem. If you use a CFS unit, it will do the same thing, but it will give you the capability to basically switch to your next slot. So if you're currently printing on I don't know, slot one in a certain material and then that material runs out, it will then jump to slot two to continue your print. Now, it doesn't matter what colours you have. If you want to load up multiple different colour empty spools and you're not bothered about what colour the print is, fine, you can do that. Sorry, me again. Just to clarify, 
To use up all your partial spools, you need to set all the colors to the same color in the CFS. So for example, set all four colors to black, regardless of what color is actually in the machine. Back to Steve, again. You can also load up part spools that are all the same color to basically use up the remnants of every spool that you have left over or lying around. So that's quite handy. The next thing you have is an RFID chip reader. So the CFS unit will basically, if you're using Creality's own filaments that has the RFID chip built in, the unit will actually detect straight away what spool is in that slot, what color and all of that jazz. So you don't need to change anything in the slicer does it automatically so if you're using that filament that's handy to know if not it's not a big deal to really change it manually in the slicing software anyway you also have the capability to send prints to the machine via wi-fi or via traditional usb stick as most of us are used to by now print quality and slicing so we've used this machine mostly with creality print because it's new there isn't yet Orca profiles out there that work consistently and reliably and whatever else. So we've literally performed all of our testing through Creality Print. The overall print quality from the machine is surprisingly good. One of the first things that we printed in multicolor was this decorative skull. And honestly, yes, it did take a while to print because there was a ridiculous amount of color changes that took place to print this item. But the overall quality of it is faultless there is no color bleed there's no visible defects in the print quality at all we were thoroughly thoroughly impressed with how that turned out as some of you will be aware to test different aspects of the machine when we did the unboxing we printed sam the snake if you don't remember that video please see the link in the description because you can watch the unboxing video there in its full entirety the purpose of this print was not only to show multicolor printing capability but to show any defects in the tolerances and whatever else from the machine out of the box. And as you can see, it moves absolutely perfectly. It printed perfectly. There was no drama with this Flexi Snake whatsoever. Since you're transitioning from black to yellow, there's no colour bleed. You haven't got any black washing into the yellow or anything like that. It works perfectly. We also, well, I didn't personally, Chris, the videographer, did because he's very musical minded, wanted to print the guitar. So he has printed all of the components for this guitar on the Creality High. The neck or the fretboard, however you want to call it, was printed in multicolor. The tuner, handles, knobs, twisty bits, the things that tighten your strings, they were printed in multicolor. The pickups were also printed in multicolor along with the body. So you can see the back of the body is like a wood color. And then obviously you've got the face plate printed in a different colour, sandwiched with a white laminate in between. It printed perfect, no problem whatsoever. So the Lion again, printed in multicolour. On the high, we printed a batch of four because for those of you who don't know, it takes no longer in print time or waste material to print a full build plate of multicolour prints than it does to print one because it'll only purge once per change color change so if you've got multiple prints on your bed all the same model it's more economical to print multiples rather than singulars so that's something else to bear in mind i know some of you will have concerns or questions over waste poops purged filament however you want to describe it this in our opinion is no different to any other machine that operates on the same system produce the same amount of waste will take the same amount of time and no matter what you do, you will never get away with that unless you have a machine that has multiple tool heads. Because whether you like it or not, if you want to print multicolor, the machine has to purge out the other color filament from the nozzle before it puts the new one in. Otherwise, you end up with mixed colors. So if you take two different colors in a paint form, you put them into a bucket, you stir them around, it comes out a different color. Filament's no different. If you put two different color filaments through a nozzle without purging one out first, then you'll end up with a different color filament extruding until it's flushed all of that through. So purging poops are part of the process. Pros and cons to this machine. The pros for this machine, I would say it is extremely affordable for the quality that you're actually getting. I mean, you're getting a very, very well thought out CFS unit, which is really, really easy to work on. I mean, for instance, if you did for any reason get a clog, 
looking at the bottom of the machine, everything is very, very accessible. So you can remove those dead simply without having to strip the whole thing apart. If any PTFE tubes wear out, which they do, it's easy to replace them because everything is accessible, easy to get to. There is no real dramas. The way that they thought out the inside, you've got the little spring-loaded buffers on the lid of the machine. You've got nice sections between each bay. You've also got the capability to have your silica beads, decassant, whatever you want to call it, or even if you wanted to, rice. The machine doesn't have a built-in filament dryer. That is the one downside that some of the other manufacturers do have in their change units, but it does give you quite a lot of information on the screen. So you can tell the actual humidity and whatever else inside the box. It gives you that on a digital readout. The machine itself, looking at it, it's very, very well refined, polished. It looks like a quality piece of kit. The touchscreen interface, as I've already said, is very, very user friendly. The graphics are nice and crisp, very clear. It's very responsive to the touch. We haven't had any problems with it at all. It's just a joy to use. Cons for the machine. I mean, ultimately, if you look at the setup that we've got here, I'll put them side by side so you can get a true comparison. You are going to need a decent amount of table space, unless you had a shelf or whatever that you could mount the CFS unit above. That would save you a bit of space. That is pretty much the only real downside to the machine, in my opinion. It's the footprint that the, the whole thing takes up. In the grand scheme of things, you know, it's not bad. Like I say, mount the CFS unit on a shelf or even under the desk if, if you wanted to. There's no problem with that. Provided the cable's long enough to stretch, you shouldn't have much of an issue. Final verdict. This machine, I was pleasantly surprised that I wasn't expecting much, if I'm being perfectly honest. It was relatively kept on the low low. It wasn't very well publicised. I was quietly surprised. As I say, the first thing that bounced out at me was how they'd up their game with their build quality and their aesthetics the way that they've made it more user friendly you don't need to mess with anything settings wise in Creality print with this machine we have checked the machine for firmware updates and because to this point there isn't a latest version we are printing on the factory ship version without any problem whatsoever Creality print is very well tuned to pair up with this machine so you don't need to touch anything, mess with anything. Simply drop in your file, slice it in the given material, print. You're away. As I say, it's very affordable. I mean, for that type of money, you're getting a very, very capable machine that is extremely capable of producing high quality prints on par with anything else currently on the market at that price point. It, it's really easy to use. It is as plug and play as you can get, really. You've got a couple of screws to basically assemble the machine. It doesn't take long to get up and running out of the box at all. It's all fully self-calibrating and everything else from initial setup. If you haven't seen our unboxing video, please do check out the link in the description where we've gone through all of that process for this machine. Overall, really, really good. So this is really aimed at anybody from beginners to experienced 3D printers. The machine is very, very capable for producing large batch multicolor prints. And at the price point, you could buy multiples of this machine and have a whole farm of these printing for not a lot of money. If you get the CFS unit, you can double these up. This will actually take up to four CFS units. So you've got multiple capabilities to print lots of colours within your prints. You can be printing things from flexes to ornamental pieces to shoe forge pictures the sky's the limit really and if you do want to go into the more exotic filaments like abs asa and that type of thing you can quite easily bang this in an enclosure and do that as well not a problem for it at all so that is our overview and long-term usage of this machine we haven't encountered any of the other problems that some of the other youtubers have reported i.e error codes and whatever else we just haven't had any. There's been nothing really untoward. We haven't even encountered so much as a clog. And we've not we've not held back on the machine and in any way. You know, we've give it to Chris, Chris breaks it. Simple as that. Chris did not break this. Testament to Creality. On that note, I am going to conclude this video. If you are interested in purchasing this machine, please see the link in the description as it is available on our website, which the link for the website will also be in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and if you want to, share. And if you do have any questions or you would like to know anything about this machine or any other machine, 
drop us a comment in the box below and we will do our utmost to answer you as quickly as possible. If you would like to contact us via email, the link will be in the description. We're available on email, phone, we're everywhere. Anyway, that is it. Goodbye for now. See you on the next one. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.